Okay, welcome. Today we're going to start <coughs> on how to start an engine up for the first time. Uh, recently we had a customer build his own engine and did not do this, and the thing seized up before he ever got it running. So today we're going to explain how to, <coughs> with a brand new fresh motor, how you should um, get it prepped and, and ready to rock. Um, we have this on a test stand. Um, but it'd be the same thing as if you were, you know, putting this in a bug or a bus or whatever. So anyway, first thing is um, let's get the timing close. So the easiest way to do that is pop the distributor cap um, and take a look at the rotor. And as you can see, <coughs> we're way off. So what I'm going to do is turn the engine over until the rotor is pointing towards number one wire. Okay, I'm going to put the engine up on TDC and now my rotor is pointing towards number one. Now to make sure that we're actually on number one and number not number three because crankshaft goes around twice for every time the distributor goes around once. What I'm going to do is pop <coughs> number one and two cover off. And if I look at the valves, okay, on number one, okay, <coughs> they should have some play in. To make sure I'm actually on number one, what I'll do is I'll turn the engine back and forth a few degrees, and as you can see, the rockers aren't moving. Okay, if they were to move, we are on what's called overlap, which means you're actually on number three and your distributor's 180 degrees out, and that should be addressed. So anyway, go back <coughs> to TVC. At this point, we can put the cover back on. Okay. So again, rotor's point towards number one. This will be close enough to start, okay? If it was off, what I would do is loosen this up and I would just rotate it till the middle of the rotor was in <coughs> line with number one. If you, if you don't have a mark on the distributor body, just put the cap on there, hold your finger there and go, oh, okay, there it is. So that's it for that. Wiring. If you have an alternator, the big red wire goes to the screw-on terminal and the blue or sometimes green wire would go onto the push-on. You would not have a regulator with an alternator. 90% of the time they are internally regulated. Okay, the other wires. We got a black wire here. This is your coil hot or ignition hot. That goes to the positive side of the coil. Make sure you get that right. If you have electronic ignition and you hook it up wrong, um, you're going to cook your electronics right off the bat. In this case, I have a green wire. This is for my tack for the engine stand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hook that up. I'm going to leave this wire disconnected because I do not want it to fire. Make sure it doesn't hit anything metal. Okay, on your oil pressure. Okay, this has gauges hooked up to it. Okay, so we have your factory wire should be blue with a yellow stripe. It goes to the WK that's on the sending unit. I use blue for my gauge. Okay, that would go to the G. If you have an oil temp sender, I use yellow and it would go there. Okay, so if you're not, if you don't have gauges, just make sure that this blue with the yellow stripe wires hooked up to your factory oil pressure sending unit. Okay, this engine is full flow. Okay, so we're going to work on hooking up the lines for that. So on my test stand here I have two hoses. Make sure that the hose that comes from your pump goes to the in on your filter. So this here is going to go to our pump. Go 
ahead and hook this hose up. Okay, the return line, we're going to leave it undone, okay? Uh, what we want to do is circulate oil through the engine before we even think about starting it, okay? So I've got the outlet hooked up to my filter. If you have a cooler, it would run through the cooler and then back, okay? So again, leave this one disconnected. Um, if you haven't filled your engine full of oil, now would be a good time. Okay, I have the gas line hooked up on this thing. I have the positive that goes to the coil disconnected, so there's no way the coil's going to get juice. Um, at this point, what I want to do is take the filter off, fill it full of oil, okay? Uh, screw it back on, and then uh, go get Al, your wife, somebody to help you, okay? At this point, um, we are basically ready to turn it over. I've got oil in the motor. <clears throat> so here we go. I, by turning the ignition on, I've got my gauges working. I've got my two idiot lights working. Okay, so <clears throat> again, if you do not have gauges, make sure your idiot lights are working. Okay, um, in this case, I have both. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the throttle wide open and just turn it over until I see oil come out of this hose. out of that hose, shut everything off, okay, leave the wire that's going to the coil disconnected, and now we can hook up this hose. I like to use quick fittings on here, that way I can take the engine out <clears throat> without having to cut hoses and as you saw me remove a cap, I can leave oil in the engine and just put the caps on when I pull the engine out for any reason. While I'm tightening this hose, the only other thing I can say here is it's not a bad idea to check your oil level at this point because if you have a cooler and a filter <clears throat> all of that takes oil and I'm sure you're down. Okay, that's hooked up. I'm going to just tie this hose up off the header because we don't want it melting. Okay. Alright, so we got the hose hooked up. Let's check our oil level. I'm down about a half a quart. Um, should probably put some oil in it. Um, Anyway, next step here would be, okay, leave this wire again disconnected, okay, uh, turn the ignition on, this is not <clears throat> lighting the coil, so it will not start, turn it over until we see the idiot light go out, um, and the gauge read, so here we go. <laughs> Light, light is out. 
There's 40 pounds, 60 pounds of oil pressure. We are good. Okay, at this point, make sure you check the oil level again. Okay, let me go grab a rag. Okay, see how far down we are? Took a quart. Okay, so we better add some oil. I'll be right back. I'll get this cap off. Hey, Ralph. Yeah. You got me quart of oil. What? Quart of oil. Okay, if you do not have a full flow system, basically you wouldn't be doing anything with the hoses. You would just be turning it over again with this wire disconnected until your light went out. So right now we're just waiting to grab a coat of oil. Okay, this point here, <clears throat> we're ready to fire. Uh, we got oil in it. We can go ahead and hook this wire back up. Um, make sure you have it on the positive side of the coil. Make sure if your electronic ignition that it is hooked up properly. It's a good way to cook 80 bucks worth of electronics. So in this case, black wire to the positive side of the coil with the electronic ignition, there's gonna be a red wire. It goes to the positive side. We've got a black wire from the electronic ignition that goes to the negative side. And again, here's my tack wire. Uh, I can't stress enough that you need to triple check that. I can't tell you how many times I have even hooked it up backwards, just getting in a hurry, and ended up buying a customer $80 electronic ignition. So before we actually fire this thing, what I want to do is I want to hook up a timing light. To get power for the timing light, you can do it a couple of different ways. If you have a generator, hook it up to the positive side of the coil and then just do a sheet metal screw for ground. If you have an alternator, you can come right off this post, it'll be live all the time. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to the coil because that's what most people are going to end up doing. And then just to ground. Okay, that's it. So, at this point, um, we should have gas in it already because 
we've been pumping gas as we've been turning it over. Okay, and now we should be ready to fire. So there we go. One of the air cleaners. And looking down the carburetor and make sure it's squirting. It is. Okay. Um, so, we are in time. Everything's hooked up. It should fire. That coughing you hear is because this carburetor's got fuel and that one doesn't yet. Until the engine quits advancing and then setting, I set my timing at 28 degrees. So at this point, okay, it's time. Okay, we have definitely have oil pressure, so we're not hurting it. Um, and what I would do at this particular point now is start tuning the carburetors, as you can hear by the way it's running, um, that it's that they're way off. So at this point, I would just run it, dial in my carburetors. Once I got that, I would let it cool down. I would readjust the valves, and then I would start it again, and I would rev it up to about, you know, 1,500, two grand by putting a stop underneath the throttle, and then just letting it sit there and run for about 10, 15 minutes to break in the can, okay? Again, I would let it cool down, readjust the valves again um, and that's about it go out and run it for a day you know readjust the valves again if you find that the valves are all over the place every time you adjust them keep doing it until everything finds a home and after that 
you know, drive the thing a thousand miles and, you know, check them again. And that's about it. Any questions?